one woman can inspire. And I want to share with you how I feel that Mary Kay did that. I joined Mary Kay in 1973. Now I know some of you weren't born. Don't talk to me. <laughs> so I had the privilege of knowing Mary Kay on a personal level for many years. I have ridden camels with her on the beach in Morocco. I've shopped with her for that alligator handbag in Spain. And I spent all day at the spa with her in La Costa. And been to so many places over the world that it's hard to even put into a short speech. Because so many of you have never met her, what I want to do is share with you a little bit about that amazing woman and her dream to help other women become everything that they could become. I want to share some of my memories about her and how she touched my life. To start with, she taught us not to take ourselves too seriously. She had such a great sense of humor. If you had a meeting with her, you had to bring a joke. <laughs> She used to say that she went to bed looking like Elizabeth Taylor and woke up looking like Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> she always made us laugh and feel like we were just like she was. She'd say that she put her pantyhose on one leg at a time, just like we did. And if we got discouraged by things going wrong, she'd say that she had the bloodiest knees in the room because she had fallen down and gotten up more times than any of the rest of us. And here's one of my favorite things she used to say about attitude. She'd rather see a forced smile than a sincere grouch. <laughs> Once in an interview, Mary Kay was asked if she ever thought about the hereafter. She responded, sure. Oftentimes, I go into a room and I say to myself, what did I come in here after? <laughs> I remember one particularly funny moment. As a top 10 director for three years in a row, she came to our city to honor our unit. Rob and I picked her up at the airport and we went on TV interviews all day long. I watched her as she chatterbooked everyone who interviewed her. She really did do what she asked us to do. And after the interview, we went to dinner at the airport Marriott Revolving Restaurant. Rob and I were very nervous, but she made us feel really comfortable. She sat and she told us stories. And then after dinner, Mel pulled out a cigar and offered one to Rob. Well, I could tell Mary Kay didn't want Mel to smoke the cigar in the restaurant. In fact, she said to my husband, Rob, why don't you take Mel outside to see the airplanes and tell him all about them? Of course, we as women, we knew what she was doing, right? She was politely asking them to smoke outside. But Mel and Rob didn't catch it. <laughs> She suggested other, a few other things, and then eventually they caught on and went outside. I was so frustrated and embarrassed, but when they left, Mary Kay just leaned over the table and said to me, don't worry, men are all alike. God just gave you different faces if you tell them apart. <laughs> They wrote a song and sang it to her backstage. She loved it so much that she had them perform it on the leadership stage to the entire audience. You know, I had the privilege of debuting as a national sales director 31 years ago. Mary Kay herself called me on the telephone to tell me I'd been promoted to the position of Independent National Sales Director. Can you imagine how that felt? 
Just to hear her voice on the phone was just amazing. There she was telling me how much she loved me and how much she appreciated me. I remember thinking to myself, boy, it was so worth it to work for these past nine years to become a national sales director and have her call me personally at my home. You know, I was thinking about that phone call, and it reminded me of another time when Mary Kay and Richard Rogers called me to ask me to be in one of the first Mary Kay recruiting videos. It was a Super 8, I know some of you don't know what that is, but it was a Super 8, and all the directors had to buy this huge projector to take with them to the meetings. Any director remember that? Well, I was a fairly new director, and our daughters were little. Jania, who is today a director, was only four. And Carissa, who is my office manager and runs my entire organization, brilliant woman, she was only 18 months old. Well, back then, some of you don't know this, but telephones used to be on the wall. <laughs> and they had a cord. And it kept you tethered to it. You couldn't walk around the house like you can today. And our phone was in the kitchen. I had just drawn a bath for my little girls, and I ran to the kitchen to answer the phone. It might be a customer, you know. We didn't have answer phones to take the message, so I felt I really needed to answer it. And there on the phone was Mary Kay and Richard. I remember thinking to myself, okay here, my daughters are in the bathtub, how do, I hang, how do I hang up on Mary Kay and Richard? So I didn't. I just kept talking to them, praying that my daughters would be okay and not drown. <laughs> By the time I returned to the bathroom, their little fingers were so shriveled up. I'm sure they wondered where I'd gone. But how do you say to Mary Kay, can I call you back? I just put the kids in the bathtub. Of course, she would have understood. Oh well, my daughters are fine. They're okay today. I didn't kill them. <laughs> and that reminds me of another thing that Mary Kay taught us, and that was to include our family in all of our goal setting. I remember asking the girls to pick out something that they wanted to have, and that they that they could have it by having me having Mary Kay parties would help make that happen. I told them that every time I would hold a party, they, and if they didn't cry, do your kids cry when you leave? You all remember that? If they didn't cry when I left, they would each receive a dollar toward the item that they selected. They put a picture of their item on an envelope, we taped it to the refrigerator, and every time I held a party, uh, they were quick to ask for their dollar and put it in their envelope. Well, since I was holding three to five parties a week, their envelopes were filling up fast. And one day, as I started to leave for my party, my youngest daughter started to whimper. Her sister quickly grabbed her by the arm, slapped her hand over her mouth, and said, Don't you cry. I just need three more dollars for my skin. Question. How many of you, this is your first seminar? Well, welcome to the wonderful world of Mary Kay. I remember my first seminar 40 years ago. They used to let people who were 10 years old join Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. I have been in Mary Kay for six weeks and I haven't really gotten off to a great start. In fact, I have only held one party that lasted seven hours. <laughs> no one bought a thing. How much would you buy if you thought it would take seven hours every morning to put your makeup on, right? <laughs> Little did I know that that Mary Kay would lead me to over $8 million in earnings so far. Wow. <laughs> Mary Kay was such a great role model for all of us. She told us that when she joined Stanley Home Products, she wasn't very good at first either, just like me. Her, her, she had a $7 party average in sales. 
She borrowed the money to go to her first Stanley seminar and got a lecture from a friend that she should leave her children, but she just went anyway. And just like Mary Kay, I went to my first seminar with more hope in my heart than money in my pocket. But that seminar changed my life, and I hope it changes yours too. It gave me a dream for my future. I came home with a new outlook on my career, and maybe that's why the NSD song says, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Now that I'm only two and a half years away from my NSD emeritus position, I really appreciate Mary Kay's thoughts about the ages of women. She taught us what a woman needs from birth to 18 is good parents. From 18 to 40, what you need are good looks. From 40 to 60, what you need is personality. And after 60, I'm here to tell you what you need is cash. <laughs> The NSD Family Security Plan is one of a kind in the industry. When most companies today are taking away all the benefits, Mary Kay offers real security, right? My husband Rob has done the math and told me that our NSD Emeritus Plan for he and I is worth over three and a half million dollars so far. Can you believe that? I have a very secure marriage. <laughs> he can't afford to leave me. Even though my very first skincare class lasted seven hours and zero sales, it didn't matter for one reason. I didn't quit. I went home from seminar with a goal of becoming, a coming back the next year as a sales director. There's nothing like a woman whose soul is on fire. Just get out of the way, right? I came to my first seminar with a negative attitude and big credit card debt. And I went home from seminar and went to work. I stopped making excuses and I booked my perfect start. Write that down. Back then, a perfect start was to book eight skincare classes in a two-week time period and make sure that at least five held. So I did that. Then I made sure that I booked one or two parties from every party. I took a prospective recruit with me to every party or a new recruit to train them. I put facial boxes out and followed up on all the leads. I did everything I learned at seminar. I started holding three to five parties a week instead of thinking about it. And as a result, in 18 months, we paid off every single credit card. And I became American sales director at the same time. So the question is this, will that plan still work today? My answer is absolutely yes, I agree with you. People are doing it right now in the Warfield area, and I want to tell you about them. They're doing it bigger and faster. Brand new sales director, Hope Barker Trumbull. A nursing coordinator in Baconton, Georgia. Do you know where that is? She's a mother of two little boys, joined Mary Kay with a vision in her heart. Just 10 weeks after she joined Mary Kay, she was the Mary Kay sales director. She did, did, did DIQ in one month, following Amanda Jones' example from last year. We call them one month wonders. And then there's Jennifer Converse in Thompsonville, Michigan. And Catherine Martinez and her offspring, Amy Branch, in Georgia. They decided they didn't want to be an average director, so they have just debuted this year with over 50 unit members. And as impressive as that is, we have a record breaker in the Warfield National Area. 31 years this record's not been broken. But brand new sales director, Melanie Bass, from the big city of Dobron, Georgia, who was 
I have a teaching degree, but can't get a teaching job in Georgia because they're not hiring teachers. She debuted as a director with 73 unit members and three PI peers. She is building her national area. And I want you to know all these women I've just told you about are being inspired by soon to be, moments away from being a national sales director, Beth Highland from Alabama. We're just waiting for the official announcement from Mary Kay Corporate at any moment. Beth is one of the most determined, godly women that I know. She really believes that God wants each of us to prosper and have abundance. She teaches people to think big. She and her husband Andy conduct a weekly spiritual conference call for anyone in Mary Kay. Not just her people in her national area to be. They include anyone who wants to be a part of it and they close the call with a prayer over each and every one of the callers. They truly are changing people's lives. I am so proud of her and all the Warfield family NSDs. There will be six of us now with Beth joining us. So I'd like your area to please stand when I call your name. Starting with the Warfield National Area, would you please stand with the pilot area included? When the day comes, I know that our national sales directors will carry on magnificently, and the Mary Kay philosophies will be perpetuated. And she was describing all of these national sales directors. Would all of our national sales directors please stand?